Welcome to part two of unit two, exploration and colonization. Part two is the English colonies. And notice, English, it's in all caps, like everything else, but English colonies are the colonies that we're going to study here. And on the front here, you can see some reasons why the English came here to colonize. You can see some very important people in this unit and in very important places. This should look pretty familiar to you. As you can see in the map here, we have New York, the British flag, the Union Jack. Uh, this you might not recognize, but you will by the end of the unit. This is the English Parliament. Then there's this guy, King James I. Some reasons for colonization, skins, tobacco. We have religious people. And then Native Americans and the first Thanksgiving at the Plymouth Colony. So we're going to cover quite a bit of information here in this unit. And um, you really need to watch these videos, pay attention, be ready for class, and be ready with all of this information for your test. So let's begin. Before Columbus, the land that we now call North, well, America and the United States, was populated by groups of Native Americans or Indians. They had no way of knowing how contact with the Europeans would forever alter or change their way of life. With each new explorer came a new land claim. The Europeans viewed America as a blank or empty land just waiting for them to claim and settle it. And if you take a look, we know that the land here in North America was not blank. There were many, many millions of Native Americans spread throughout North America. And so we're going to study the clash of cultures. We're going to study the conquest of this land. And we're going to study the, the way of life for these English uh, colonists as they came and spread throughout North America. So the Spanish, they found their gold and they conquered parts of Central and South America and the Caribbean islands. The French found a land that was rich in furs and soon sought the help of Indian tribes in creating a profitable fur trade. The Dutch developed the land along the Hudson River and created a profitable trading relationship with local Indian tribes. But what we're studying here, it, um, it was the English who would make the biggest impact on America. England would send thousands of English men and women to a land called North America that was rich in natural resources and land. To the English people who came to live in the 13 colonies, America would become their home. That's important to realize that the other three groups, the Spanish, the French, the Dutch, they were not interested in sending colonists. They were interested in extracting wealth from North America, not sending people to live and colonize. But the English, they were interested in both the wealth of the land and sending people here to create stable and lasting uh, towns, cities, and ways of life. So there's a totally different mindset that the English had. Theirs was to colonize and inhabit and spread rather than just use. They came from the island nation of England or Great Britain and made the dangerous voyage across the Atlantic Ocean for the promise of a better life in the wilderness known as America. They'd be at the mercy of the weather and the strange people who already lived here. Many of them would die in the first year of settlement, but the survivors would build homes and towns. More would come from England, and America would grow and prosper. So notice, it's 3,000 miles from England to North America across the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is very rough. It's very cold in this area between England and North America. And uh, But people were willing to brave all of the risks because they were promised a better life. They were promised freedom in a variety of ways that we'll talk about. They were promised work and a, a uh, basically they were promised survival if they could make it to North America and then succeed at living through all of the challenges of this new place. So the first English colony that was started here in North America was known as Roanoke, and it was created by Sir Walter Raleigh in 1585. He brought seven ships and 600 soldiers to establish the settlement. The colony was created on Roanoke Island in North Carolina, and he named the territory Virginia. 
Now, we have heard of Virginia before, and Sir Walter Raleigh is responsible for the Virginia that we have today. He claimed the land of uh, Roanoke Island, which today is North Carolina, but um, he claimed this land and his charter, and which we'll get to in a minute, his charter covered a huge swath of land that became the state, well, the colony and then the state of Virginia. Now, he had a problem. He um, landed in Roanoke Island, which ended up being swampy and nasty and very difficult to survive in. So um, it was abandoned, and the people that survived returned to England due to food shortages and trouble with Indians. Now, trouble with Indians comes in the form of massacres, fighting, and um, basically very bad things happening to the loser. So after lots of fighting and starvation, Sir Walter Raleigh came back to England. And now this was in 1585, almost a hundred years after Columbus arrived. And um, in that, in the meantime, between Columbus and Sir Walter Raleigh, there were people that came and explored all along the east coast of North America. And but Walter Raleigh is the first one who we track as an English colonist. He brought colonists. They tried to set up a permanent colony. But you have to remember that Roanoke failed. Now, the second English colony was created by John White in 1587. If you look back here, the first English colony of Roanoke was 1585, and it failed. The second was called Roanoke and built in the same site as the original two years later. And you're going to find that most likely the same thing will happen. Because people, when they do the same thing over and over that doesn't work, it still doesn't work. So he brought 120 men, women and children, and he left them here in, in Roanoke. He went back to England because supplies were low. And while he was in England, England was in a war with Spain. So he couldn't return for three years. And... Um, when he finally came back, he found that the colony was abandoned and that all the colonists were gone. Nobody knew where they were. Um, you can see this picture here. He returned to the colony and he found written on a tree, Croatoan, which is another island around Roanoke Island. And it's also a name of no local Native American groups. Now, I don't want to steal all the thunder from class or from writing and media, but there is a very, this is a very interesting story that we're going to get into, hopefully. Uh, so pay attention to Roanoke, pay attention to the first and second attempt at Roanoke, and realize that both colonies at Roanoke failed. The first failed and people went home, the survivors went home. The second failed and the colonists were all wiped out. Nobody knows what happened to them. A colony is a settlement ruled by a dis distant parent country. And I think that we're pretty good with understanding that. And um, But now we need to talk about why these colonies were created in the first place. So as far as England goes, Parliament and the British money, they lost money on both the colonies. And then they were worried. They didn't want to get into these attempts at making colonies anymore. So something had to come along to encourage government, encourage people to, to put up the wealth to send these people to create colonies. Because after two attempts, nobody made any money. People lost money. Now, even though the colonies failed, English merchants were interested in creating colonies in America for economic reasons. They hoped that there could be gold and silver, even though none was ever found. They wanted soil for growing cotton, corn, and any other kind of good that could be sold. They knew that in the in the North America, there was lumber and sap that could be used, and fish oil, and whale, fish and whale oil. There were animal furs. There was all this opportunity to trade with Native Americans. They knew that that was out there, but it was a huge risk to attempt to create these colonies because... Roanoke, both Roanokes, failed. A lot of people died. A lot of wealth was lost. So merchants came up with this idea called a joint stock company um, because what happened is Parliament, which is England's lawmaking body, 
they did not want to put any money towards colonizing anymore. So the merchants joined together to form joint stock companies to send colonists to the New World to create colonies. A joint stock company is a company owned by several investors through stock. Stock is ownership in a company. So these, um, these merchants would put all their money together. So if there were 10 millionaires, they all put a million dollars in, they, this company now has $10 million to spend on colonizing. Where is the English government in all of this? They're not investing money, so they're not involved, except they control and own the land that the joint stock company um, eventually would claim. So what the English king and queen would do is give charters to the companies. A charter is a paper giving certain rights to a person or group. That charter lists all of the rules and laws that the joint stock company had to follow. So when a joint stock company claimed land, well, it, it, the charter said the land is the king and the queen's, and some of the profit from the colony is going to be the king and the queen's. But in the end, the joint stock company hopefully would make a lot of money and make it worthwhile for their investment. Um, so there are actually two ways that colonies were funded, which means paid for. There were joint stock companies, which we talked about, and proprietors. A proprietor is a noble who used his or her own money to start a colony in the New World. And so the two ways, again, are that a colony can be started is by a joint stock company. A, that's a bunch of people pooling their money together and sending people to colonize. Or a proprietor, which is somebody who's really rich and can afford to uh, create their colony. Here's a picture of, of the House of Parliament in England. And Big Ben is over there on the right. This is where the English Parliament or the English government meets to run the country. Because England has a, a uh, combination of a king and parliament. Parliament is elected by people and the king is just in charge. But nowadays, and even back in the 1700s, 1600s, the king had less power than parliament had. And even today, the king and the queen, they don't really do much. Uh, they are respected, but they don't make the decisions, the day-to-day -day decisions to run the government like Parliament does. 